Hey, it's Pyam here from Niche. Let's talk about the property news biased. Let's talk about all of those channels that are out there. Some of them are doing saying it's going to crash. It's going to be horrible. Others are going, I became a millionaire and I've just bought my 15th property. Where's the balance in all of this? Let's look at ulterior motives. Let's look at agendas. Let's look at what people should be doing, what type of research you should be doing, what sort of channels you should be watching. It's only my opinion. But let me know what you guys think. Like and subscribe as always. And I'll catch you on the video. Please do. Please, 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 please. And it's not just because of YouTube algorithms or YouTube. Let me know what your thoughts are on this viewpoint. Let's talk about the property market. Let's talk about the different people within YouTube that are present, um, Instagram and all the other very various social media channels. And let's talk about the ulterior sort of ulterior motives of a lot of people. Let's start off by me. Okay, what's my ulterior motive? Why am I taking out this time to record this video, to put it out there, get someone to cut it up? show it on social media what's what's what am i what do i get out of it well it's pretty simple i'm a mortgage broker so my uh, strategy is let me get out some content let me talk about what i know what i think i know and then when the time is right there will be certain people who will go actually he's all right there'll be some other people that will go no he's useless he doesn't know what he's talking about or i don't like him or i don't take to him and there'll be some people that go well actually i can i could do business with this guy he doesn't wear a suit he doesn't wear a tie he doesn't necessarily have to shave he's the sort of an average guy in terms of who i would get on with and i could probably trust whether it's a property developer or a first-time buyer that's essentially why i'm doing what i'm doing so there you go that's why that's why i'm doing it okay so let's now look at the various people that have commented on the property market in the last week to two weeks and then let's let's try to work out why they've got some agendas or why they've got certain views okay for me again going back to me whether the property market does really well whether it stumbles and doesn't do really well I will get business from various angles if it's doing really well obviously I'll do very well on the purchases if it doesn't do so well, then a lot of people want specialist advice, they need affordability checks, they need more choice, they may not go with their existing lender, they may be looking, searching, and they would want advice. So we tend to pick up a lot more remortgage work, secure loan work, specialist work, development work, buy to let refinance work. So, you know, it's probably obviously always better if the market is hotter but for me it doesn't fundamentally change me massively because I run a small business there's myself there's Richard we've got five of our staff that's it so I don't need to be doing hundreds of mortgages a month okay we're not in the volume game right so and that that's important to understand where people are coming from and what they're trying to do what they're trying to achieve by putting that video out there okay um, then you've got the guys so then okay so that's me out of the way right then you've got mainstream news right mainstream news are there because you know one minute is Andrew Tate next minute is this next minute is somebody else next minute is the submarine next minute is Ukraine so they're just moving along they're just moving that thing along right so fundamentally obviously they have to cover it because it's it's a massive thing but they don't really look at it in depth, okay? And they will pass on things. So they will tell you, oh yeah, average mortgage rates will go up. Okay, fine. But what does that really mean? How can you deal with it? How can you not deal with it? They don't really go into it and they're just passing comment. And they've got biased agendas, whether, you know, whether you're looking at the Sky News or you're looking at GB News, who, I was watching GB News. Uh, it's interesting, right? Actually, the economic guy at GB News, he's actually really good, but they try their hardest their absolute hardest not to mention that brexit had some thing to do with inflation it's just a fact it has okay you look at medications you look at food you look at all the other bits and pieces it's undoubtedly had an effect to current inflation 
but they will never mention it. Right? Now, it's a common sense thing. I'm not talk talking about Brexit being a bad thing. It's just a, it's just part and parcel of it. Whether or not it will get better in the future, that's a different argument. But it has had it. But the fact that they will omit that from their current, you know, from everything that they do, sort of says something. If you look at the other things, you know, they they're talking about oh yeah, but people are getting pay rises, and you know, you look at Sky News, people are getting pay rises and bits and pieces. However, you know. The biggest cost is obviously you've got the war. You've had Ukraine issue. You've had, um, you know, the, the price of food was going up anyway. It was to do with supply chain issues. And it's got to do with nurses receiving a pay rise or civil servants getting more. But it's not. But then you look at the BBC sort of narrative and that's a little bit more in terms of, you know, would I say it's overview because BBC is certainly biased as well. So they've all got their individual bias. Then you've got the channels that are to do with property and property investments so there are lots of people that make a living literally make a living on teaching people how to get into property okay so they've got their certain amount of bias right there they've got they've got direct interest on what the perceived notions are now again i'm not saying it's a wrong thing because i have got people right now that are buying properties that are converting them that are making money out of them OK, and that could be a good strategy long term or it's certainly been a good strategy in the past. OK, and these people, the way they're doing it, they don't want a market that's going down. There's no point you saying I want to buy a property for 200, but by the time I come to refinance, it's worth 170. OK, so they've got an interest in it. So but there are ways you can add value to it. And I'm sure, um, you know, that, that, but the, ultimately they're not going to come and tell you property is a bad investment. And guess what? Sometimes properties are bad investments. Some sometimes by becoming a buy to let landlord is a bad choice for some clients. You know, if you've got heavy adverse credit, you've got nothing to, to fall back on. You're trying to go and do something on bridging finance. The exit strategy would have changed because the rental calculations would have changed. Of course, you shouldn't be going into it. You shouldn't be going into it. If you've got some money to fall back on, you've got some assets to fall back on, fine. But if you're trying to do this in such a climate where you don't have a plan B, then you shouldn't go into it just because you've seen a course, just because you've been on a two-day course somewhere. right? So you've got to take a, you know everything with a pinch of salt, what people are telling you right now. Then you've got the channels that have been pessimistic right the way through um, about uh, about the property market. So there are people, literally, there's one chap, he's literally sold his property, um, he's living in rented accommodation, and he's been banging on about a market crash for the last, I don't know, 50 videos that I've seen. Right? And obviously, he's got an interest in the property market, and he believes strongly, and he's put his money where his mouth is. He's, he's, sold, he's, he's sold his property and he's in rental accommodation and he's waiting for this crash to come. And he's doing videos after videos after videos and 10,000 people, 15,000 people, 20,000 people are watching these videos because those 20,000 people, when you look at the comments, the way you can see balance, okay, is you look at those pessimistic channels, you look at those comments and those comments, if you read them, every single person has got the same viewpoint. Our property market's going to tumble. It's going to bomb. Oh, it's horrible. These bloody landlords. This, this, this. So you look at those people. There is no interaction. There is no balanced opinion. There is no, oh, by the way, yes, it might fall, but it might be 10% rather than 35, 40%, 90%. So there, is, there don't seem to be any balance out there. So you've got the property guys. I'm a property millionaire. And I'm making 10 million pounds now of property. And not many people are going, well, actually, I got done on this and this property was a nightmare and uh, I got downvalued and there were structural problems and I got myself into shit with bridging finance. I couldn't get myself out of it. I had problems with the refinancing element of it. The lender wouldn't value it at what, what I thought it was valued. There was a dispute. The legals took longer. The service charge, there was a service charge problem with a freeholder. Um, you know, there's a lease problem in there. They, you don't hear that. So you get all these people going, yeah, I made 10 million, I made 5 million, I made this. And then you've got these guys going, now it's going to be 50%, it's going to be 80%. It's going so there is a, and this is unfortunately YouTube, and I, I wanted you guys to understand how YouTube works. YouTube, one of the reasons people say, Pyam, why isn't your channel much bigger? You've got lots of videos you've done. You've got to understand how YouTube works. YouTube will... Uh, if YouTube, if I do a video and say there's going to be a market crash and I get 
20,000 people watching it. If tomorrow I do another video about the market crash, YouTube will go, well, actually, 20,000 people have watched this. We're going to push this video further and I might get 30,000 views. And if I do another one about that topic, I might get 50,000 pounds views. Now, if I make a video today and get 20,000 views and then tomorrow I make another video saying, well, actually, here's the other side of it. And there may not be a 50 percent correction. It might be a 10 percent correction. YouTube will go, hang on a minute those 20,000 people, they came to see you talk about this. Why are you talking about that? Okay, so, but I think balance is so important, okay, when it comes to this thing. So, and also, I like watching GB News, and I like watching Navarro Media, okay? Two different things. Anti, almost very socialist, anti-landlord, anti this, my rent's been rolled up. Navarro Media, okay, left wing, very left wing, Corbyn sort of style left wing, GB News, Fox News, all of those US sort of right wing stuff, I watch those, and I think you've got to do that with property as well, so watch, um, channel, and I will try to, if you want me to talk about this a little bit further, I will put the channels that I watch, some channels are very, very up for the property and everything to do with property, and making money and become a millionaire and do this, there are some channels that are very negative and it's going to be a crash and sell your property now, and da -da -da. but everybody's trying to make money out of it somewhere, okay, so, and that's my final point, everybody's doing this for money, everyone, me, them, everyone, okay so bear that in mind you know what my agenda is my, I've told you what my agenda is my agenda is somewhere down the line out of the thousands of people that watch my videos some of them will pick up the phone and go do you know what we can do with the business with this guy right that's my agenda and that's fine okay but then there'll be other people's their agenda is okay well I'll buy this guy I want to go and learn what he's doing I want to know how he became a millionaire I want to learn his courses there'll be other guys that are saying you know, oh yeah, it's a terrible market. However, if you wanted to do this, go with my solicitor. If you wanted to do this, go with my mortgage broker. If you wanted to do this, go with my legal packs or my whatever packs and survey packs or whatever. Everybody is trying to make a living out of this. Make that, make sure you know. And also remember about this balanced, okay? If you see a channel and there isn't a full balance in there, just because you agree with them doesn't necessarily mean it's right. Go and find an alternative channel and see what the alternative channel is saying. All right, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.